All right, welcome back. Uh, so let's continue on with our derivative rules. So these are some other basic rules. Um, so we already looked at the power rule, the derivative of a constant. So number one uh, is if you notice that your function has been multiplied by a constant, then its derivative will be multiplied by that same constant. Number two says that if you're adding and subtracting multiple functions together, then you can just do the derivative of each term and you keep the same operation in between, but it's only with uh, addition and subtraction. Okay, so let's do these. The derivative of sine is cosine. What? And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Whoa, that's a little unexpected. Or is it? Okay, number five, this one's usually a favorite. The derivative of e to the x is, dun dun dun, e to the x. It is itself, which is weird. Because remember, these derivatives are the, give you the slopes of the tangent line, so it gives you how fast the function changes. So with e, it is changing at its own rate, which is really weird. Okay, anyway, I digress. Okay, the derivative of ln of x, this one's also weird in that it gives you a completely different type of function. It goes from a logarithm to rational. Okay, so example three, we're gonna prove that the derivative of sine is actually equal to Cosine. We're just going to prove this one. The derivative of cosine would um, be proved in a pretty much similar manner. You can look up number five and number six if you want to, if you just want to see them. Otherwise, you just got to know them. Okay, so anytime you prove that the derivative is something, you go back to that limit definition. So the limit as x approaches zero, or h approaches zero, of sine x plus h minus sine of x all over h. Okay, so with this, we're going to use that sum identity with sine and kind of expand this guy out. So that would be sine x cosine h plus sine h cosine x and then minus sine of x all over h. And then from here, we're gonna kind of reorganize and kind of break things up. So I'm gonna break it up into two fractions, each with its own limit. And I'm gonna take the first term and the third term together in one fraction And then I'm going to take the middle term and give it its own fraction as well. Just like that. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I've got trig functions and I'm trying to get those special limits to come out. So on the first one, I'm gonna pull off a negative sign And then the second one, I don't really need to do anything to it as long as I kind of realize what it is I'm looking at. Okay, so let's look at the first, first one. It's as h approaches zero. So right, <clears throat> right in here, I've got that second special limit. So this fraction is actually going to go to zero. So I have negative sine of x times zero plus, and then on the second limit, I have a sine h over h as h goes to zero. Well, that 
part is going to go to 1. So that knocks out 1 times cosine is cosine. And there's your proof. <clears throat> All right, so uh, I would expect you to know how to do this, um, but you'd only have to do this if it tells you to prove it. Otherwise, if you come across, you know, this the derivative of sine, you just put cosine. All right, so example four. Let's go ahead and do this one, and then we'll stop the video. So find the derivative of each function. So you have multiple terms in here, so that's going to go off of this property here, which says, hey, just do the derivative of each term. So the derivative of x to the sixth, six x to the fifth, minus the derivative of x squared, which would be two x, plus the derivative of nine x would just be nine. And then the derivative of negative 10, that's your constant, that's just a zero. And you're done. Which is a whole lot faster than using that dang old limit definition, isn't it? Okay, part B, the derivative of 4x to the third. So now we're talking about property number one. You've got a constant already there. So that constant stays. So the four doesn't disappear. Then what's the derivative of x to the third? 3x squared. So you really, when you pull a, the exponent down, you can just straight multiply it to any number that's in front. So the 4 and the 3 just is 12x squared. The derivative of sine is cosine. And the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And there's your simplified derivative. Okay, let's move on to part C. Uh, the derivative of 7 cosine of x would be negative 7 sine of x minus 4. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Okay, for G, or part D, uh, you got to rewrite that as, uh, first. So that's x to the 1 third minus 4. You can either rewrite it out on paper or just rewrite it in your head. So now you can do that derivative of this. So one third, decrease the power by one. So negative two thirds, and then the derivative of negative four is just zero. And again, you have a couple ways you can write that answer. You can flip it down Or you can not only flip it down, you can change it back to a radical. So that would be the cube root of x squared. Personally, I would either go with this first one uh, or maybe the second. This one's not all that useful, but I mean, you can write whichever one you want. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop the video here and we'll continue in the next one.